All right, hello my children. So today is gonna be a very quick one. I am going to show you the updated sound system that I did um, the previous video, where the enemy pursues the player if it hears them through a, either a door or a window. Um, I just fixed up a couple of things so it's a little bit more consistent. Uh, the other one had a lot of bugs, so I just kind of streamlined everything and made it uh, a little bit easier to work with. That way there are less bugs and it's more, what do you call it? More efficient. Okay, and then the other thing I'm going to show you how to do um, is how to get an enemy to search the last coordinates of a player. Where is this? So let's say you, whoops. So let's say you don't want the enemy to pursue the player immediately. You want them to search an area that they last heard the player or last saw the player. So let's say this is the area. Then the enemy should go to that last spot and then start looking around for the player. As you can see here, he's now searching around the level or the player and then after a certain amount of time he'll just stop let's see here there we go so he should wind up over here i think i have the timer set too soon for him but aside from that um yeah so let's just get started okay so first things first let's go through all the code that i changed in the other one if you want to just go to how to get the search uh, state working. I'm gonna leave a timestamp, that way you can just skip right there. Then you can just, you know, miss all this stuff. All right, so the first thing that I did for the uh, pursuit is I created a brand new variable called uh, player near window, if it was true or false. And essentially, if this is true, then the, the player is actually near window. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna stop the sound from being, redu uh, yeah, being reduced. If you remember in the last one, um, it had, yeah, it would do some mathematics right here to do the um, to do the sound reduction. If the player is near a window and the window is open, it's just not going to do that. So essentially, it's the enemy is no longer listening for the window. It's just listening for the player, and then it's going to check if the player is near an open window or not. So if you look here, is this it? No, here in our window door script I added the same thing here player is close true or false and then going back down to here I rewrote this code a little bit so this stuff here should be the same as well as this but instead of it grabbing a sound variable it's just gonna kick back either it's true or false so if the player is near it then um, it's true and if it's not then it's false and then we're gonna have a function or a method called in the enemy script it's going to call this particular function here and then it's going to find out what that variable is and if you look over here in the enemy ah here it is you can see it right here so if the player is so if the uh, result collider is in player group or if the player is near window it's going to um, trigger this code and then here, if the player is not near the window, or if it's not near a group, it's obviously going to like a wall or it's hitting a beam or something, then it is going to uh, trigger this code instead, which is the, uh, the sound reduction. Then finally, it's going to check if the window, right here, let's see, where is this actually being called? Okay, it's being called in the physics process and then check for sound, the physics, so it's been called every single frame. Uh, this one here, same same deal. Um, I believe all of this code is pretty much identical to the code that I had last time. The only difference is, again, there is no sound variable. It's just looking if the player is true or, or if the player is near the window or not. And then as you can see here, result uh, collider, and it's gonna check for player sound. This check for player sound is actually here. As you can see here, check for player sound. So this variable, uh, player is close is gonna return when this is called so all it's saying is check if the window is open so it's gonna be a true or false and check if the check the function player sound and that's just gonna check if the player is close or not so if the if the window is open and the player is close that means the enemy can hear it so the player is near the window it's gonna go back up to here as you can see here player is near window or player is not near window and then it's gonna run the code for the sound and that's pretty much it. Um, this here, noise trigger pursuit, no longer need it. Um, because, like I said, it's not doing, it's not looking for the sound anymore. 
think I just did something. Um, yeah. So before the player's footsteps were checked every single time, uh, every single frame, um, that created a bug where the player's sound variable was was always being checked. So even if you stopped, uh, depending on which floor you were on, it was still firing off that sound. So I think I had for a regular floor it was two, and then for loud floors it was six. So even if the player had stand it or had stopped moving on like um, a really loud surface, it was still giving that sound to the enemy. So all I did was I just moved it to the footstep timer. That way it will only trigger when we are moving. And if the player ever stops moving, then it should reset to zero. I should have that somewhere around here. Dang it. Oh, here it is. So um, when the sound emitter is finished, meaning once it plays the footsteps down, um, it's going to instantly reset our sound back to zero. So that's all that's going to do. And then the enemy will be able to hear the player's footsteps only when they're moving. Let's see here. Anything else? Oh, I changed the toggle for the uh, open window. Um, for whatever reason, um, yeah, for whatever reason, uh, the toggling it didn't work. So I just set it for two different buttons. So the left button opens the window, the right button closes it. All right, I think that's all I did for the update for the sound system. I'm just going to take all this code and leave it at the bottom. That way you can parse through it if you need to. Um, I'll also leave this on the original video as well with the tagline updated code, and then the other one will be outdated code. So yeah, um, all I did um, with the player is I removed its noise emitter. I forgot to mention that. I got rid of it. It was no longer needed. All I did uh, to compensate for that um, was that I just increased the box, the sound box for the enemy's ear. So now the enemy can hear twice the distance it was before. So it does, the, the player doesn't need the noise emitter box anymore. So this also makes it a little bit more cleaner. Um, once the enemy enters this enemy's box, it will be able to hear if the enemy's, uh, excuse me, if the, if the player enters the enemy's ear box, then the enemy will be able to hear for the player and then it will be able to make his adjustments that way. I completely forgot to mention that, but um, I'm mentioning it now. It's in the notes anyway. If you look around here somewhere, I'm sure you'll find it. But uh, now let's get on to the enemy search state. So the enemy is gonna need a couple of things here. So one thing I added was a regular node. I called this the path anchor. It needs to be a, a normal uh, node. And the reason being is if it's attached to the enemy or if it's attached to a node 3D, it's gonna follow the enemy and then it's gonna do some weird funky stuff where the enemy is trying to move to a position that's constantly moving um, along with it. So it'll never reach its destination. Then the next thing you're gonna need is a path 3D and a path follow 3D. So the path 3D is a, I guess you call it a curve, but it allows you to draw points up here of a particular, I guess you call it parameter or circumference, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then it's going to create a flat plane for you. And what this is going to do is going to give our enemy um, a search area that it can search for. Um, this is really easy. All you do is um, you use this little add point icon here, and then you can see here it adds a point. And then once you get to, you know, a certain amount of points, you can use this little close off point here, I think, is this it? Drag, drag. Is this it here? Here it is, close curve, and then it will, it will close it for you as such. Um, but I'm not gonna use those because I already, I already created it. And then here, the path follow is um, the actual area that the, um, what is this actually? This is, no, no, this is the, what would you call this? I mean, this creates the area. And I guess this would be the the points within the area or the volume within the path itself or this particular uh, shape that we created. That way, um, when we what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to randomly select points within this area. And then the enemy will find those points. Um, yeah, we'll find those points after a timer is, um, fired off. So it's going to find a point, wait for the timer, go to the next point, wait for the timer, go to the next point, and so on and so forth. And it's going to keep doing that until um, our other timer end search fires off and then it's going to send it back to its position or it's just going to stop the search. 
So yeah, once you get these things set up, we are going to have some code. So the code for this is actually pretty simple. So I just changed the pursuit state um, here. So if the enemy's ever in the pursuit, the pursuit state, all I did was disable the pursuit state and gave it a new function called search player, wait, search for player's last position. And then I just passed on the delta. Um, that way it moves dependent, I mean, independent of the frame rate. And then this code here is pretty much exactly identical to the pursuit state. The only difference is it is now looking for a searchable area. The searchable area here is that path 3D that I was talking about earlier. So all I did was create an on, on ready variable, called it searchable area, and then I just got the node for it. I think that was it, right? Yeah. Now we need to set the position of this for whenever the enemy gets triggered or whenever we want this trigger. So I just triggered it for the sound. It's not gonna be triggered for the enemy's sight, but you can very well or very easily do that. Um, all right, here we go. So <clears throat> whenever the player triggers the pursuit state for the enemy, we're just gonna create a couple of variables here. So here, um, I'm just gonna make the end search um, timer start. That way, um, once he starts searching, the timer is going to start ticking down. I have it set to 10 seconds. So it's going to search for 10 seconds and then it's going to stop and it's going to end up in its, uh, whatever position it was, it was at, um, when the timer stopped. And then here we have the search area and we want its global position to be equal to the player's current position. So when this thing fires off, it's going to take, where is this? It's going to take this area right here and it's going to place it wherever the player currently is. Can I move this? Oh, it doesn't look like it can. Yeah, like that. To wherever the player is currently at. And then the enemy will be able to, to search and go to that area. I have the code for, uh, well, regardless if the player is near window or if it's near wall or whatever. If the sound is loud enough, um, this will be triggered. All right, so I'm just going to rewind that because I lied. <laughs> Okay, so this here, not used for anything. Whoops, not used for anything. So if you have, if you have the uh, search area here, the searchable area global position is equal to the player's position, then you are golden. I don't know what this was for um, at all. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna edit out the last part and uh, yeah. So yeah, if you've done all that, I think, I don't think there's anything else in here that uh, requires me to, that was done, I already told about that. I already told about that. Yeah, I don't think I forgot anything. So yeah, if you've done all that, then the enemy should go to the last position that it hears the player, like so. And then it should start just searching around the area picking random spots within that volume. And then when the timer goes off, it goes to whatever position it was at last. So yeah, this is working perfectly. Um, just just note that the timer is just uh, firing off faster than the enemy can reach its position. So that's why it's doing some wonky stuff here. That way, for example, it doesn't, it doesn't reach this area. But yeah. Now, obviously, you should do like state machines and whatnot. Um, I'm going to leave a quick video of the game that I'm working on, on how far you can push this little uh, search state. But um, yeah, all in all, this is just like the bare bones basics. Um, so this should get you started on what you need to do. Again, I don't think I missed anything. Oh, actually, there's one thing I missed. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, if you have any questions, I guess just feel free to ask me. I do look at all my comments for the most part. All right, my children, until next time, farewell.